Welcome to the uh, Planning Commission meeting, the uh, December 6, 2017. And uh, we've got uh, first two items today. First, we have a public hearing, which we'll go into first. And uh, then we'll have our uh, general, regular, scheduled, scheduled meeting. What we do on our uh, public hearings, uh, we'll open the meeting and we have a roll call and so on and so forth. And then uh, we have uh, give the opportunity to anyone uh, who wants to come up and talk in favor or against the project. But we ask the developers to come up first and they can explain in case there's anyone in the audience who would like to come up to speak for or against. So with that being said, uh, Jerry, if we'll open the meeting, our uh, public hearing. Yes, uh, roll call. Mayor Williams. Here. Chairman Gears. Here. John Brown. Here. And Chris Brown did call and said he probably would not be able to make it. All right. Thank you, Jerry. We have uh, nothing underneath uh, old business. I know who I am. So we'll, we'll move into uh, new business. Our one item is we have uh, MSA Sport. And we have uh, Christopher representing Xavier University is submitting a preliminary and final plan unit development, which is a PUD plan for the property known as 1723 Clenny Avenue, Hamilton County, partial number 651 dash zero zero five four dash zero two one zero dash zero zero so at this point we would ask chris if you wanted to uh come forth and explain uh to anyone who number one's watching and number two if we have any general public who want to speak uh before for or against the project so Absolutely. if you don't mind just you know uh, just give us your name and your address and we'll go from there. Sure. Who you represent. Chris Bunyak with MSA Architects, um, working out of uh, 316 West 4th, downtown. Okay. Um, just like to explain the project a little bit for those that are unfamiliar with it. Um, obviously it's on the parcel that's adjacent to the current development that was University Station a couple years back. It's just west of that land. Um, the building's general program is about 160,000 square feet over four levels and um, program contained within is um, one half of the building, Asunci's rec for the university, Xavier University Rec Center. There's a central spine that then connects the eastern portion of the building, which houses a um, majority of Xavier University classroom, lab space, and then on the first level of that will be some tenant fit out through um, Tri Health, and they'll occupy about 50% of that first floor. But um, I said that the building in general is about four stories tall, about 60 feet at its highest point. Um, general aesthetic of the building is that to follow what Xavier has patterned over um, recent years. I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with the campus and um, the aesthetic that they've developed and this is much in a similar vein of, of, that, of that construction. So that, that was the intent. Um, with open space that's on the parcel that will not be built, um, the majority of it is just going to stay open green lawn. We're just going to seed it, let it grow for now, um, with a small parking lot just due south of the building that has approximately 14 spaces on site. So that's the, that's the general qualities of the building. All right. Are you happy to answer any specific questions? You guys I was going to say, do you have any questions? This is all going to be on the south side of Clenny, correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. The medical user, uh, student nursing, uh, training for nursing in et cetera, medical field, and then uh, medical personnel employed there working out of that building is that that is correct and I, ha I have a whole army of folk behind me if they want to <laughs> step in as well but um that that's the case we'll be tri health we'll be there it's not I don't think hospital it's more um more urgent care not I shouldn't say urgent care but primary care um not hospital facility again and it is to kind of uh, foster the collaboration between tri health and xavier students so it's it's kind of a co-op building in, unto itself and again they're on just the first level of that building so it's more training for the students then it is going to be for care. There will be some care, but it, it's, it's going to be both. Okay. Chris, can I? Yeah, if you would. Yeah. Um, Bill Baker with MSA Architects as well. You can just have a seat there by that microphone if you like. Pop right in, Mr. Mayor. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Good to see you. Uh, Bill Baker, MSA Architects, practicing the same address as Chris uh, Bunyak downtown. Um, it will, the first floor, as Chris alluded to, their. Um, it will be tri-health occupancy. It's really part of, it's a university, essentially, health clinic for university students 
and staff. There will also be some co-op education program with the health and counseling <coughs> for the university as well as some of the academic programs in the upper <laughs> three floors of that wing. But yeah, it's primarily self-contained serving Xavier University students and staff and there will be medical staff, tri-health medical staff employed and working there, some doctors, some nurses and other related medical professionals. The drawings I've seen of the building are I thought were really great. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank that you. Entrance Appreciate wave it. That big axe right in the front of it, that, that sends a message right there. <laughs> it really does. I kind of enjoyed seeing that uh, due to recent events. Anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a good looking building. Thank you. It really is. Hour wise, I mean, are there, I mean, I know this is already an ask, but I mean, is like the student center going to be open? 24/7. No, I think we had. No, we had hours of operation listed under there. Um, 5:45 oh. to about 11 p.m. So it's not a 24/7 okay. building. I mean, it's going to open pretty early and it'll be yeah. open late to accommodate the student body, but it's not a 24/7 operation. Okay. And you and you feel there's enough? Uh, well, I mean, I guess a lot of it they could just walk to, but uh, yeah, that, that's enough adequate parking. We have a, a parking map in there, and the intent, as you alluded to, is most of these folks are on foot. I mean, it, it is a campus building serving right. the on foot population so okay okay do we know ambulances working in or out of there no if any th there may be a drop-off or pickoff but there's no ambulances I mean, it's not gonna be like a, a campus emergency type deal mm -hmm. okay. all right it truly um mr brown it truly serves the functions of mcgrath health and counseling now they're really just relocating across the street into this building that's okay. good All right. Any other questions? No. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll get into our. Uh, anybody wants to speak for or against it? Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Looks great. All right. We'll. Uh, I'll ask uh, anyone to come forward who would like uh, to speak in favor of the development. Step forward and give your name and address and uh, uh, say what you got to say. Oh, okay. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Sheeran. I'm uh, Vice President for Facilities at Xavier. I'll just make a couple of brief comments okay. in favor of the project. Uh, this has been part of a, um, our 2005 master plan. Uh, that really has kind of evolved. It was originally going to be a rec center and then is, with this affiliation with TriHealth has really become what we're calling the Health United Building. So it really um, will support the health and wellness of the entire uh, campus population. Something we're very excited about having there for our, for our students and we think it's a real uh, addition to the neighborhood. I don't know if you have any questions or not, but I think I just wanted to give a couple of comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the uh, uh, development, please come forward. All right, thank you. We'll uh, open it up to the floor. Anyone who would uh, like to speak against our development, please come forward. Anyone who'd like to speak against the development, please come forward. All right. Thank you. Since we uh, uh, have that part uh, finished with, I would uh, we'd like to uh, close the public hearings. Do I hear uh, a motion to a motion close to the close public the hearing. hearing? Second. Second that. Any discussion? If not, do you mind calling the roll, uh, Jerry? Mayor Williams? Yes. Chairman Gears? Yes. John Brown? Yes. All right, thank you, Jerry. The public uh -huh. hearing part is closed. All right, we'll move into our regular meeting. And uh, do you mind doing a roll call so we can open up our regular meeting, Jerry? Sure. Chairman, Chairman Gears? Here. Mayor Williams? Here. John Brown? Here. All right, thank you. Um, is there, we have the minutes from our September 6th meeting. Uh, I make a motion to accept the minutes as if read. All right, do I have a second on second. that? 
All right. Any discussion? If not, would you call the roll, Jerry? Uh, John Brown? Yes. Uh, Mayor Williams? Yes. Chairman Gears? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Thank you. We have no old business. Underneath new business, we have uh, two items. First one is uh, TWG Development. Andrea Kent, representing owner Eddie David, is submitting for review a proposed development located at 4019-4031 Montgomery Road, Hamilton County. Partials numbers 651-0053-0073. Dash zero zero six five one dash zero zero five three dash zero zero eight one dash zero zero and partials six five one dash zero zero five three dash zero zero one five dash zero zero. Um, are there any comments, questions? Uh, we have the set of plans before us. Um, we got them ahead of time so we can look at them. Uh, any questions, comments at this point? You know, the, as, as we all know in this commission, that there's been a lot of discussion on this project, pro and con, up and down. Sometimes I've been in favor, sometimes against. Uh, I, I, I guess I, this has changed. Now we've been told in the past that there was no parking. Now there is parking. And I, I guess what I'd like to know from the uh, from the commissioner here, and I was hoping legal would be here. Is there any, does this project meet all of our codes and all of our zoning? Yes, sir. So there's no, there's no violation of the code and there's no violation on zoning. You are correct. That's right. That wins. Anyway, um, so there's, there's, there's nothing, you know, if somebody comes to us and say, Lee, well, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have done it. Even if we wanted to, we couldn't because they've met all the zoning. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Um, and as I put it in the memorandum, um, <clears throat> since there was so much interest in this, um, TWG, I asked them to come in front of the Planning Commission uh, voluntarily, even though Planning Commission didn't have to, to grant anything on this. It's such an important uh, piece of uh, Montgomery Road that I, I thought it was important that they come and they volunteered to do that and bring forth their plans just to show you that they are meeting all the regulations. So that's, that was my second part. So there was no requirement for them to be here today. No, sir. They came today and presented this in an open forum in order to inform the public. Yes, sir. Okay, so I go back to the same thing. No violation of the code, no zoning laws, no setback restrictions, no parking restrictions. They meet all the building codes and they meet all the zoning. That's correct. Take care of that. I just have one question for Jerry. Yes. In your staff comments, it talks about the parking, 15 on-street parking spots. Yes. That is not on Montgomery Road, correct? Uh, part of it is on Montgomery Road, and I believe part of it is on Waverly. But even if we, did, I think, remove the portion that's on Montgomery Road, I believe we still met the requirements. Okay. Because obviously we would have the, the, the usual parking restrictions along Montgomery Road. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. 7 to 9 yep. in the morning. On, uh, on that, you know, we, we did hear uh, comments, trust me, we always hear comments from the general meeting. It was down the community center um, that there were going to be balconies overhanging the sidewalk and all that. And in fact, uh, when I look at it, uh, it looks like they're just basically safety guards in front of the uh, patio doors or patio windows. Similar to what's at University Station in some areas. Yeah. Okay. You would not be able to use utilize that as a balcony. Correct. It, it, it's a um, essentially a railing that allows okay. you to open a large space for fresh air, but you couldn't step out. On so it. we're not going to have you know wild parties on the balconies. So. <laughs> It doesn't seem conducive to parties. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I noticed is that these are some of these units are really small. I mean, like like one central living area with a kitchen and bed and so. Mm -hmm. And so, 
And the other thing we, we keep hearing is, okay, they, it's supposed to be for seniors, and what constitutes a senior? The, I'm ancient if a senior is 50. It's 55. Oh, Lord. Well. I can't remember when I was 55. <laughs> but, I mean, but what I'm saying is everybody said, well, these seniors are going to move in with kids, and we're going to give I mean, this is, this is the kind of arguments we've heard, and, and this might be a chance to address those issues. And so I don't know how many kids you can put in one room and you know and that uh, so I guess these are issues that I guess what I'm getting at will there be some regulations to govern if, if somebody moves in there if I'm a senior which I am and I move in and I'm old and cranky and I <laughs> and I get there and 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 there's kids running all over and I get all irritated Am, am, I, am I making sense? So is yeah. Uh, do you want me to step up to the mic? Sure, sure if you would. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> yeah. We have. Let me just this. Um, so I, this was coming from the community meeting that we had had roughly, I want to say, two months ago, um, and there was, um, you know, it was a small kind of intimate discussion um, and so there were you know there were a couple of concerns one of it is this is going to be a, a building with children running around in it um, and then you know by the principal who you had met Joe Witts of TWG development um, was there and he's just like that's you know that, that's not the case and not in our in our senior portfolio and I don't have the numbers right off of me but I mean I think we managed maybe 500 senior units and I mean the average age is you know folks are usually in their 70s that live at the properties and so um, there's an age restriction that's driven by the tax credits, which is how the project's being financed. And so you have to be, the head of household who's the income earner has to be 55, age 55. Um, that's generally, you know, they're generally older. Um, but in all reality, there's, there's no kids at our properties. People with families, they, they don't want to live in a senior building. You know, I mean, and, but if somebody came to us and they said they have, their daughter and their grandchild living with them and they qualify, well then it's, it's a fair housing. You can't deny somebody the fact just because of their, their age status when they meet the other requirements. Um, and so that was the, the issue that was being addressing. If somebody comes to you under those circumstances, yes, we would house them. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it's not gonna happen in 56 units and there's not gonna be 56 kids. And I mean, and there's just, it just, we don't see that happen in our It wouldn't be experience. something typical that happens. Right. Is there going to be on-site management? There is. So there'll be a full-time property manager and service coordinator on-site, um, and she'll be there um, like 8 to 5. Same thing with the maintenance, full-time maintenance staff. Um, and then she's also on call 24 hours in the event there's any emergencies or, or anything at the building. And the building's totally green? Totally green. The construction. Uh, new construction? Yes. Yeah, yep, yeah, it is. With, with it, I think I saw there's uh, one or two entrances. Will those be uh, secured entrances? They are. So, yeah, so the building will be secured. Right. Residents will have a, a fob and okay. uh, they can, you know, and en enter and exit the building, you know, whenever, whenever they need to. But, yeah, this, it's secured. Okay. And there'll be site lighting, um, covered entrances. Okay. So I, I, I don't know the cost of, uh, I'm not an expert in the cost of construction, but the, the figure I seen was, um, so how many units? I'm, 56 uh, units. 56 mm -hmm. units. And, and the figure I seen in here was $11 million. That's, is that, even for me, it seems like that, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Uh, it's a good investment, uh, considering the building that's there now. Um, it's not as big an investment as uh, Xavier's doing down the street, which is uh, a lot bigger building, and that's $40 million. But if you look at the, the two, I hate to combine the two, but it's a, it's a great investment, just these two projects that we have coming into the community uh, with Xavier and uh, TWG's uh, Carpenters Flats. You're looking at $51, $51 million just invested probably within less than a mile. Next thing you know, you'll be talking real money. That's um, it. I mean, it... it, it I can say this, this thing is made in a 180 degree turnaround because whether I was a victim of not listening or whatever, but 
it, it, for me, this has changed from what it was to what it is. Am I right? Was was the original drawing? Was there setbacks in the original drawings, or am I? What am I missing? Well, the original one. If I don't want to, uh, and, and you can jump in after I'm done, uh, Andrea. But the original drawing that we had was a very, very early concept plan, in order for. TWG to go to the state of Ohio in order to get the tax credits to help on the project. It was never meant as the overall end, the end design, but they had to have at least a conceptual drawing on what they wanted to do, knowing that we would have to tweak it later on, which we have now to meet the requirements. Okay, so was there parking included in that? Yes. There was parking included in that? There was. The, the challenge on that uh, original plan was they had some off-street parking, which, as you notice now, uh, Andrea and her staff and uh, design professionals have made that into a green space. And that's going to be utilized for the um, uh, people that are going to be uh, having the apartments at the senior housing. So that's going to be an area for them to utilize. <clears throat> because like I said, when this first thing started out, I was favorite. Then all of a sudden it changed. And these concept drawings get you in trouble all the time. I mean, I, Concept drawings are never like they turn out to be. <laughs> trees that they show are actually 20-year-old trees, and they're sticks when you put them in. So, I mean, these concept yeah. drawings, I think, get you in trouble. Well, and it's, so the application stage, I mean, the to get tax credits, it's a very competitive process, and it's like a 30% award rate. And so, you know, you really want to minimize your expenditure. So you really, you know, you have your architect. James didn't draw it, but he's sitting back there. He, he did those plans. But I mean, it's just, uh, it's a conceptual, they want to see like where the units are, where the community spaces are, and what's on your site. So it is very high level. Okay. But I'm, I'm glad you think that it did 180 turnout. I think that we've yeah. taken a lot of the feedback we've gotten, especially within the community as well, and really just um, <laughs> been very cognizant. That'd be the understatement of the year. <laughs> um, but, yeah. People ran yeah, into me after they had the meeting down mm. at the community center. Huh. Have but, you, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. Have you acquired all the property you need? So um, so we have it under contract with okay. E.D. Frank, and so they, the Midwest Woodworking Company, Inc., owns where the building is, and then the lot across the street north of Waverly is owned by E.D. and her late husband, David Frank. And so we have both of those under contract, and we will close on those when we close on our financing, which is um, going to be March right now is when we're targeting start of construction. Yeah, I do have a question on the... The property across the street, mm -hmm. the proposed green space. Mm -hmm. Now I know that we've had some issues in the past with how to say swings, kids' equipment. That's not going to be on there, is it? Swings? No, there's no okay. playground. No, okay. and that, that's why right now it's not going to be a playground. Um, and so, so we understand that there's no landscape plan right now at this time. That was one thing Jerry asked for, and we just we weren't at that point to provide it. And I didn't want to provide a plan just to be given y'all a plan when we, I just want to put some thought into it, but there's a solar component that's going to be on this project, but we're still refining um, with the Ohio housing um, with OFA. And so it's a, they want us to be, we're going to be roughly 60% renewable mm -hmm. um, energy generation. So there'll be panels and we might have potentially <coughs> a carport on the side. And so that's not shown, but I left that green space above in the event we <coughs> put solar panels or anything up across <coughs> there. But I think that's going to be more, it's going to be an amenity space, a garden space for the seniors. Okay, I mean, it's, it's not going to be a park per se. No, no, it's okay. not a park. It'll be public. Okay. And we'll probably gate it off. I would do something. I, 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 I would do something. 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 Okay. I, d I just have two questions. Okay. Simple, I hope. So, just for all clarification, this isn't, this isn't uh, any connection with Section 8 housing. Correct. Correct? Okay. And, uh, like your track record, I mean, the properties you develop, and you, do you hang on to them or do you flip them? after amount of time? Um, so that's a very good question. And so there's two divisions within our company. One's the affordable housing division and one's the market rate division. On market rate properties, you you build them, you lease them up, you stabilize them, and then you sell them. That's how that, that product works. On the low income side, you um, we, will, we will own it, we will build it, and we will manage it. And there's, you have, you get awarded tax credits 
by the, the housing agency. Investors buy those tax credits, so that's how you get your equity. They're buying this, so it's, you're creating a partnership. So that limited partnership is responsible for the project staying in compliance over a 15 year duration. And then Ohio adds an additional 15 years. So it's a 30 year relationship you have with this lim limited partner. And so, um, you know, what goes along with that is you have, you know, annual audits, you do unit walkthroughs, you do uh, you just, this is ongoing compliance, a lot of oversight. And so you don't turn properties over because you have that, lim that partnership. And so, um, so we've not sold any of our low-income housing properties, and I know that's been discussed. We've only been around for seven years, but that's typically you don't sell general partner interests in in these properties. You're on them, you know, for the long haul. Okay. So. And and I just, I mean, for my own education, mm -hmm. is, is and I know I guess that's one of the um, hot words is low-income housing, yep. but I think what and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, seniors and there and there are many seniors out there um, who don't get a lot of money from Social Security. Not that I'm knocking Social Security, so but most of them aren't millionaires that are on Social Security. So you could be sick. I mean, it's a consideration of low income housing. If if and I'm just throwing out an example, some people I know might only collect twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars a month from Social Security. That would be considered low income. Am I? Correct. So if somebody has a, I believe, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe the annual income is, thir if you have a one person, it's 13000 to $29,000 a year to qualify for that. And so I don't, I can't do the math in my head. Really pretty much blends Roughly, into what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. and so that's, and the majority of people that live in there, their social security, their pensions, their disability, um, you know, and they, they don't have savings. And so that's the majority of our tenants. What you have, uh, and you're going to rent these out mm -hmm. per month, or are you going to lease them per annually? Annually, mm -hmm. okay. So it's somebody in going to come in today and rent it January 1st, and then February 1st they don't have their rent money, so then we're going to. And I'm just using examples, mm -hmm. and we see the sheriff set out the furniture. I mean, yeah, not within a month, but it does. But I'm just saying yeah. that isn't that isn't the clientele. <laughs> um, you're talking about no and um, you know I mean we have our the senior properties have very low turnover mm -hmm. um, even I mean our family properties turn over much more frequently and they're more harsh um, but our senior properties I mean usually you've got senior, seniors walking down with a check you know and they get to the oh. property manager so it's, it's a different different mentality well, they but, worry about that but uh, they do my um, mother-in-law is in a senior housing in, yeah uh, Arbor Woods so probably walks Anderson. down or wheels down a check or however she she gets yeah. around but um uh, no, I mean, it's very low turnover on the senior properties um, and an eviction process. I mean, it, it's all written in the lease, what you can and can't do. Okay. Um, and the eviction process is pretty lengthy. Um, I mean, it takes maybe three months to evict a tenant just because there's so much regulation right. and, and things you got to follow. And, and my last question, mm -hmm. uh, like question. services, mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be providing any kind of transportation for the seniors to go to the grocery store or anything like that? I mean, is that going to be available or are they on their own? So there's, um, there's a couple different service providers on this site. The main one, um, there's a couple that are coming to the site. Um, I know there's a, a, a dental checkup place that they'll be coming to the site. Um, and then there's CAS, which is Cincinnati Area Senior Services. And so they do, they service our other property, other senior property here in Cincinnati. Um, and they provide transportation. Um, they've got a couple senior centers around um, and, and do transportation. But as far as taking seniors out to to groceries or to do errands, to doctor's visits and stuff, we, we do not provide that. Okay. We don't have a, a, a bus. It's probably okay. not a bad idea, quite frankly. But it's not, it's still, it's not assisted living. It's still independent senior living. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and I just, and, yeah. and it is, I, I had the wrong, it's Ashbury Woods where she lives. Okay. But they do, I'm just, they do have, that's her big goal, was they go to the grocery store at the Kroger's on Beachmont every Wednesday. And, and they have a small van mm -hmm. and then they load up and, you know, they get their groceries and they help them so that, but anyway, I'm just, so I, I, that's why I'm asking some of the questions. It would I'm be nice. familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not something that we currently have done. I got you. Done. No, I, I just mm -hmm. was just curious. What is your anticipated um, demolition date? So um, right now we're anticipating closing March. 
um, in the spring and then demolition we have to do a um, little bit of abatement and then demolition is probably going to take maybe two to three months there's still quite a bit of stuff in the building I was just over there this morning um, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with, with Edie but she was met me out on site but there's still quite a bit of stuff and so I think we need to we need to figure out uh, how to get rid of it some of that woods the plywood can't be used but there's still a lot of a lot of good lumber in there so i don't know if there's any cincinnati or maybe xavier xavier's just fine <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about xavier they're gonna be just, they're gonna, settle down boys you're going to be just fine uh, don't lick your chops yet but there's if, if there's wood that's in stock there's some good there's some nice looking wood in there they have gotten rid of quite a bit but there's a lot of that's been in there for 75 years it come out of south america from really nice stock so the african mahogany is done, yeah I'm thinking of that's gone and of course <laughs> i'm always late I had my own but i mean we, we would we you know we would like it before xavier gets up there <laughs> john kush will be up there with a truck in two days so, but i mean if, if we can get if we can get in it i'd like to look at that yeah definitely so that's we're fun. clear now that there's no zoning issue and i think you know all the the public uproar and discussion I think led to these changes, and I think it opened it up for discussion, and I, and I think it was it had a benefit uh, for whatever is agonizing it was, and I think it had an effect on the project, and and in, in some ways a positive effect, and and the offer was made, and discussions were made to discuss it with the public, and once again, like I said, there's no zoning and there's nothing illegal, so that takes care of that. And you will be fully compliant with OFA, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. I know some people have been worried about that. Yep. Right. And I think that part of the part of the problem is maybe I could have done a better job just educating, educating the community on what is, you know, it's called the affordable housing program, but what is affordable? What does it look like? Who are your people? Who are you? So I mean it's it's with with Norwood not having any affordable or low income housing tax credit properties, there's that hurdle, you know, that we, we that we have to get over so um but i think that hopefully we'll we'll get there and if not we'll <coughs> invite you all to the ribbon cutting there there really there product. was only one mistake made and i think that's been rectified it was met was comment that was said at this council meeting that put me in right field but i mean that's I that's know. that's water over the dam uh and i hope that won't happen again so ready to move on okay yeah, that whole block with the cruising building being redone i mean that'll be a big improvement mm -hmm. for that whole block mm -hmm. and we'll just see what we got with the south or going to the north but uh any other questions no all right thank you mm -hmm. thank appreciate you. it uh, with that being said uh, anything else we really don't have anything to vote on do we no we i don't mean we have to accept it or do we uh jerry uh, no, you really don't have to vote on anything. I mean, uh, if you want to uh, just voice your uh, uh, support for it, that's fine. I personally am totally in favor of it. Uh, from what's there now, what's been there for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. I mean, I was I was waiting for that building to just go up in flames any time, just like the one down at Ross and yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, the building. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and if they meet all the standards, yep. all the guidelines, all the codified ordinances everything i'm totally in favor of it. well being as old as i am i i like that old building but if you know nobody wants it and there's not going to develop it then there's no no other choice but i still like that old building and and as far as i'm concerned i think you've made a lot of progress and it's simple as this if it's legal it's zoning go with god i mean you know do it i would chime in and and even though we don't have to do a vote but just say you know Everything I've seen, along with all the questions answered, it looks very good, and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next uh, on the agenda, uh, we have um, MSA Sport. We have uh, Christopher here, representing Xavier University, is submitting the preliminary plan, uh, preliminary and final plan unit development which is a PUD plan for the property known as 1723 Clinty Avenue Hamilton County partial number 651-0054-0210-00 does anyone have any more questions comments or concerns 
the drawing I seen is spectacular and, and 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 we've gone over this for a number of years and we've how many times have we heard this over the years uh, since we first met down there and and, and did groundbreaking <coughs> and, and watching that building come down and watch it get cleared and, and here's the simple fact everybody says wow well, why do you do that with Xavier University well there wouldn't be nothing down there if it wasn't for Xavier University and what's the draw at Clinton and Montgomery Xavier University and so they've made a large investment down there and this is just a continued part of that package and the wisdom of Xavier University building in Norwood I think is just spectacular I think I think I, I give you wisdom for building in Norwood <laughs> I give you credit for that but it's going to be a beautiful building and it's just a continuation on down there so it just keeps growing and developing and, and the university keeps growing and the area around it keeps uh, uh, developing and I think there's a history with Xavier or Messer I think Messer did you you've built over half that campus I think haven't you yes I hope so <laughs> 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 only halfway done though yeah I know <laughs> I mean, it, it's 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 a good move. Yeah, it, it's a no no lose situation. You can't lose. I just have one question. Will that replace then the existing uh, swimming area and the uh, what do you want to call uh, student activity center down on Victory Parkway? It's, the uh, O'Connor Sports Center that's currently there will stay yeah. there, but it'll, it'll be uh, renovated for uh, intercollegiate athletics. Okay. And then the old Schmidt Field House will be demolished. Okay. So I'll be going down with the gardens then. Cincinnati Gardens. Okay. Any other questions? Or not, uh, I say it's outstanding, and, and as we've experienced over the past 14 years, everything that uh, XU does is first class. They don't cut any corners. And uh, we look forward to working with them on uh, their site uh, to the north, uh, which is now a parking lot. But anyway. Uh, with that, I'll make a motion uh, that we uh, approve the uh, preliminary and final plan unit development there. I'll second it. Any discussion? No. If not, would you take the vote, Mr. Mayor Williams? Yes. Chairman Gears? Yes. John Brown? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Thank you all very much. Uh, good luck. Looks good. Thank you. With that, we uh, have no more communications or miscellaneous items. We have. Uh, uh, one, can we have a motion to accept our, uh, our absent member, Mr. Brown, could make, make it? Move. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Third. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.